Hi you guys, hi you guys, welcome back, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is Dana Ray here and I am back with a word from the Lord finally. Y'all, this was a long little hiatus that the Lord did not tell me about and I didn't know what type of changes he was making like to my ministry. Like I just rested as he had called me to rest. Um, and at some point I was like, am I resting or am I supposed to be quiet? Like, am I missing something? And then the Lord had given my, um, my homegirl Nina a dream about me, um, both for Christ. She, he had given her a dream about me, um, uh, about something happening outside. And anyway, I was sleeping. So that confirmed to me that I was supposed to be resting and that, you know, I was doing what God had called me to do at the time, which was like basically a bunch of nothing. Um, so anyway, I really, really, really missed you guys. And I was so happy today um, as I was driving home when the Lord confirmed that he wanted me to release a word to you guys today. And I'm like, Woohoo, finally, like I, um, I had, I was driving home from work and I had asked him, I said, well, Lord, if you want me to release the word, help me, let me see, um, 911, you know, like, let me see 911. And I saw 911 twice, like on the way home. So I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, well, what do you want me to release? Because he has given me, you know, so many dreams just every day in the life of a prophet is just, we see a lot. We hear a lot. We are attentive to a lot. We get a lot of dreams. Um, some of them, we understand what God is saying. Some of them, we do not at the time and he will reveal it later. Um, welcome back to everybody who is an OG and welcome, welcome for the first time to everybody who is new. I am Dana Ray, a prophetic voice, and I am, um, sent on YouTube to release words and to share my life with you guys. Okay. But yeah. Um, so as a prophet, uh, I won't even just say a prophetic voice. As a prophet, I am a prophet, y'all. Like, everything about my life is very much led by the Lord. And um, and even when I wasn't in God's will, even when I didn't know that I was a prophet, even when I was living in sin um, and disconnected from God, my steps had been ordered by Him. Like, he, like the college that I chose to go to, the friends that he had me around, um, the profession that I chose to be in, even though I did not know or I was not surrendered to God, he was still leading my entire life. So I have been a prophet. What I have been what he has called me to do before I even knew that that is what he called me to do. Um, so like it is insane when I think and I look back over my life and I'm like, wow, like this is why all this happened to me. And this is why I was here and there. And, and even when I made mistakes or did not, you know, consult you about my decisions, you still made sure that I was in the right career that would allow me to do what you called me to do. Um, it's just insane. So anyway, yeah. So we hear a lot, we see a lot. So it's like, I did not really know what he wanted me to share because there's been so much happening in this time of, um, of my hiatus or whatever. I won't even call it a hiatus because I don't know how God is going to call me to this platform. I don't know if he's going to call me up here once a month. I don't know if he's going to call me up here once every two months. I don't know if he's going to have me up here. I, I don't believe he's going to have me up here every day because he know that I don't have that kind of time. Like what, what he's called me to do and how he has called me to live out my journey, it's like, okay, I cannot work and have a husband and have kids and be on YouTube every day. Um, that's just not what he's called me to do. He has called people to do that. And that is perfectly fine. It's just not what he's called me to do. So I ain't finna be up here every day. Um, probably ever, never. Um, but yes, yeah, so I don't, I, I don't want to say sorry for the hiatus or I'm back or stuff like that because this is just something new that God is doing and this is just how he is working through me and you guys know that I will come up here when he tells me to come up here and if he does not tell me to come up here then I'm not coming up here. Um, so thank you guys for the support on my travel video, my travel vlog. Um, he did tell me to start back doing that um, more. So I have a whole bunch of content that I need to release, but I will release it in his timing. So it may be late, whatever. I'm going to release it in his timing. And y'all know I'm working on learning Spanish. So it's a lot. I work full time. Okay. I got a lot going on. Okay. But the word for today is titled Heads Up. Satan doesn't play fair. Just obey, nothing extra. 
hashtag watch. Let me repeat that. Heads up, Satan doesn't play fair, just obey, nothing extra, hashtag watch. The time right now where I am is 5.06 p.m. All right, so this heads up came from me finding a quarter <laughs> twice um, in my pocket. And when the quarter fell, like when I was getting out of my car at my apartment complex, but it fell on tails up. So I'm like, Lord, like, what are you saying about, I know this is something. And as soon as the quarter fell, I was, I thought about heads up. The Lord also had me see the words heads up um, yesterday in an email that I got and I recorded it in my notes. So that's how I came up. Well, not I came up. That's how the Lord was telling me that this is what he wanted me to use for the title. Um, so heads up means an advance warning of something, a message that alerts or prepares. Now you guys know that God uses me a lot when he is letting you guys know or letting me know about the strategies of the enemy and what he is calling us to, what he is walking us to, what we're already in. He always uses me. Well, a lot of times he uses me to see beforehand so that I can come here and warn you guys of what the enemy has up his sleeve so that when it does come, you will be prepared and you will know how to resist. You will recognize it and you will know how to flee. All right. So this dream that God gave me that I'm going to share with you guys is a heads up. It is a warning um, of what the enemy has prepared. Okay. So the dream, this dream I had on January 21st of this year of 2024. All right. So let's share the dream. All right. Here's the dream. There was another dream kind of setting in my childhood bedroom. I was in a relationship of some sort with Cat Williams. I remember having sex with him before and I felt he was expecting this again, but it had been a week. It's like he was only having sex for me because it's something that he thought we should do in this relationship. I remember knowing about my husband being my husband and wondering why or how I'd gotten caught up, caught up with Cat Williams while I was waiting for him. Anyway, now I'm in the bathroom at home in my childhood home um, and I'm thinking that I need to tell Kat that we need to practice abstinence and see how he handles this. It was my way of not sleeping with him anymore and trying to regain my position in waiting for my husband. But I knew I was a prophet and I was like, this is why God hasn't given me words. This is what I'm thinking in the dream. This is why God haven't given me wor words because I'm in sin. Even though I'm not sleeping with my God ordained husband, I'm sleeping with someone else. And now I'm in sin. So God can't use me. I felt so convicted. Like I disappointed my followers and my ministry, even though they had no idea of what I was doing because I hadn't told them. I knew that my husband was about to come now and I wanted to have this clean slate story to tell him, but I didn't anymore because I had messed up. Okay, this is the interpretation. And this is what I wrote down after having the dream when I was um, looking over it the next day. This is a warning. I put this in capital letters. This is a warning. You have come too far. Keep focus on God and do not entertain anybody who's not your husband. You are too, there are too many people attached to your ministry and too much weight on this promise for you to slack off and mess up now. Be alert. I didn't even remember how, I, how I'd gotten with Cat Williams. So that means that I was caught off guard and not watching and praying so that I would not fall into temptation. Okay. This is the dream that God gave me. So in this dream, while waiting for my spouse, somehow I got caught up sleeping with Cat Williams and in a whole relationship with Cat Williams. And it was not ever my intention, obviously, in this dream to be with Cat Williams because I didn't even remember how I had gotten into the situation. Like, it's like, girl, you're supposed to be waiting for a husband. How you got a whole nother relationship? And then you're trying to, like, make sure that you don't have sex no more in this relationship because you know your husband is coming now. Like, what are you doing? God is saying, watch and pray so that you do not 
fall into temptation. The enemy is bringing people because you are vulnerable, because you are tired of waiting, because you are annoyed with your spouse and how they are responding, because you have waited for so long and you, yeah, you know that that's your spouse, but it's like, well, until he get himself together, let me just do this. And, and it's almost like delusion. Like you're like enemy is like, you're not even thinking about what you're doing because you are not even conscious like of because your emotions and the despair and the hopelessness that has overtaken you about what you have been waiting for and believing God for, now you're not even thinking straight. So you're doing things that you're not even aware of. And once you cross that line, you're going to wake up very quickly and realize that you have made a terrible mistake. This is for, and actually it's for all of you. But the fact that it was me and I had thought about my followers and thought about the people that are attached to my ministry and this marriage, this is a warning for a lot of leaders. And when I say lead, you can be a leader in your family. You can be a leader to your community. You can be a leader or a voice on YouTube. People are waiting for your story to give them hope. And if you mess up, it's not just about you messing up. It's not just about your husband or you losing your marriage or you may not even lose your marriage. It's about the people who will be disappointed, who will then think that, you know, it's okay for them to fall or they their hope is now let go because your hope was let go. Do you understand what I'm saying? God trusts you with this promise and he has attached people to see you walk into this promise for his glory. You cannot afford to mess up. This is a warning other people can do things that you can't do because you are called to a higher standard. Other people can fall into masturbation. You cannot. Other people can fall into temptation and talk to other men or whatever. You cannot. And the enemy is coming with things that you will desire because he knows how many people are attached to your ministry, to your marriage, to the glory that God is wanting to reveal through your life. Be vigilant. There are two, two encounters that I have had um, recently in real life at my job where there are two men who really, really like me, okay? Um, one of them is more attractive than the other one. And I have had to ask God, how do I handle these situations? Because one of them, I'm like, this is temptation. Because, and I had to ask God to check my heart. Let me see the prayer that I prayed because the Bible says, if you lust in your heart, you have already committed adultery. If you are even thinking about being with this person or whatever, what you, what it might be like, if God hadn't called you to your husband, if you God hadn't called you to this wife, if you didn't know who your husband or wife was, th this is what I would do. This would look like this. If you are doing that, that is, you are committing adultery in your heart. Okay, so and all this work husband, work wife stuff, that is cheating. That is unacceptable when you are in a marriage. It's not cute. You can't do that. So I have, because I have not been in a marriage and I have not been in a relationship where I have had to be 
called to a higher standard where I wasn't flirting with other people and stuff like that. Like I've been in relationships, but there's always been like a flirtatious, like an overly nice or like he, 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 he in other men's faces. Even when I've been in relationships, that has been like me kind of because of the insecurities and because, you know, I wasn't married and I did not know that there was a certain way that I needed to act so that I would not invite or, or, ha or make men think that it's okay for them to flirt with me or, you know, whatever. I did not know that there was a different standard that I needed to rise up to as a wife because I ain't never been called to be a wife before until now. So I had to pray to God and be like, Lord, I don't know how to, how do I handle these people at work? Like, what am I supposed to say? I'm not quite married yet so i'm supposed to tell him i'm married like i'm wearing my this these rings you told me to wear like what am i supposed to say or do how do i handle this and how do i handle what's in my heart with this attractive one how am i going to handle this okay so the, so what i did was this is my prayer i said god the man is fine i'm not gonna say his name and my husband is still rejecting me check my heart because it's about gone. Like, I know what your will is, but right now, my heart doesn't want it because it don't want me. Or it look like it don't want me. So how about somebody who wants me? This is not even about insecurity. This is about this man is fine. And then I put the laughing out loud emojis. Then I said, nah, but for real, help me please. And then I put the crying emoji, um, this emoji and then a heart because I'm like, okay, Lord, like I'm being real with you about how fine this man is, but it's not cute because this is not what you have. Like, this is not acceptable to you. I feel like I am be disobeying you and I'm not, my heart is not right before you. I cannot hide from you, God. My heart can't, hide. you know, what's in my heart. So help me to check my heart so that I will not fumble my marriage and I'm asking God this now because when I get into my marriage it's too late okay and you guys do not try to figure out if I'm married yet or not don't try to do that because you're not gonna know okay and so God lets me know so I'm speaking how God wants me to speak okay but anyway yes yeah, so I asked I prayed this prayer and this is how God wants us to be and the, the scripture that I'm being reminded of right now is 1 John 1 and 9. And it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. At that moment, when I felt like my heart was leaning towards this man and like, even thinking about the possibility of or whatever or even just looking at him and saying oh my gosh or even me going to work and like i hope i see him today so i could avoid him but at least i could like i'm excited because somebody likes me at work like you have to be real with what's inside of you and i am very real with god i have not always been this way but i have had to learn to be real with god because he cannot help he cannot heal what we don't reveal the enemy wants us to keep these things, these thoughts, these feelings in our hearts so that God cannot address them. And what you keep a secret, oh, he finna use it. And we are not strong enough in our own ability to resist the temptations of our flesh. Only God can help us with that. And that's where many, many, many leaders have failed and have fallen because they have not taken the first sign of, oh, something ain't right here. This is okay. That person is fine, but I should not be feeling this way towards them. I should not be liking this. God, check my heart. Help me. They don't take it to God. At the first sign. So then they fall and now it's like, how did I get here? Is your heart truly surrendered to God? The scriptures. 
And these scriptures are about watch. And God had had me read this scripture, this um about watch many, many times. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what's this temptation? Like, what are you talking about? And of course, then he revealed, like I knew that he was talking about the whole work situation and something else that the Lord, I mean that not that the Lord, but that the enemy may be bringing. He's just saying right now, you need to be watchful because, because the hope, hope is deferred and our hearts are sick at this point. It's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm not crying every day because it is what it is. But at this point, hope is deferred. I'm being real with you guys and with the Lord Jesus. And I am having to be very um, vigilant about how I stay like ready because it is in these times that hope is deferred that the promise is coming to pass. It is in these times that you are like, okay, just, you know what, just whatever, that God wants to bring the promise. But when he comes around, you're not ready because you're not being vigilant about your heart, what the enemy is bringing, like last minute tactics. And some of you guys are not passing the test. So then it prolongs your union or your promise even the more. Surrender what's in your heart in secret to the Lord. Write it down. Be real with him. Say it out loud. Stop keeping secret the things that are in your heart. The scriptures. 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men be strong. Now let's read it in another version. Be on guard. Stand firm in your faith. In God, in your faith in God, respecting his precepts and keeping sound doctrine. Act like mature men. Be courageous and be strong. Okay? Be courageous and be strong. All right, Lord, I have to um change this, cut my little lamp on here because it's getting dark. Sorry, you guys. I want to cut the video off. Ooh. Anyway. Okay. Uh, suggesting. All right. So we're back. Um, that is 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. Mark 13 and 35. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. You do not know when the husband, when the spouse, when the Lord is coming through with your promise. You must be ready at all times. Wake up. Wake up. Get on post. Because the enemy is catching a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all, y'all like, I wasn't ready. Right. Because you're not being vigilant. And he is, he is looking for that so that he can have another reason to delay you. Or to make you do something that makes you feel unworthy when the thing comes. Sin has consequences. Even though the Lord forgives us for our sins and for our mistakes, there are consequences that come with our mistakes. Okay? And you will you don't always know what those consequences are. You're like, "Okay, I did this. Oops, the Lord forgave me." And then you're looking for to get right back in line where you were, not knowing that 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 thing set you back. Behind 10 folks, months later, 10 years later, and you're thinking that your sin has consequences. So think twice when the enemy tries to tempt you with sin. Think twice. That's how we can be, um, that's how we can play in our own promises not coming to pass in the time that God wants them to come to pass. That's how we can play in our own delay, sin. 
especially when God has called you to a platform. He trusts you. Why did this do this? The devil don't want this word to get out. All right, next scripture, Matthew 26 and 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I was just explaining that to y'all. My spirit did not want to want this man. My spirit did not want to like this man. But my flesh was like, it feels really good going to work knowing that somebody cute likes me and I know he's going to flirt with me today. That was my flesh. And I had to ask God to help me. And he has. Because this, this does not disappear when I get into marriage. These same temptations are going to be there. They're going to be even higher. So I need the tools right. I need God to help me now. And I need to know how to handle these situations when I'm in my marriage. I need to know how to take this stuff to God as soon as something is not right inside of me. As soon as I recognize. God, keep me. Do not let me get caught off guard. But your heart has to be surrendered. And you have to be in relationship with God. And you have to be real with him and yourself. The word watch means to be attentive or vigilant, to keep guard, to keep someone under close observation to be expectant wait to guard to protect or attend a state of alert and continuous attention you need to be in a state of alert and continuous attention about your own heart right now if this word is for you and you are walking into something that God has promised you because the enemy doesn't want us to have what God has promised us so he has temptation set up that would ultimately ruin what God has for us. Right now, it may not look like it's that serious or that big of a deal, but ultimately, that is his goal to destroy, to kill and destroy. And I was talking to one of my sisters in Christ the um, maybe a few days ago or whatever. And I was telling her that the things that the enemy is sending right now, it might be a fine man. It might be this. It might be a, a, a different job in another area outside of where God has told you to go. These things are not little. They're not little cute like, oh, he's sexy and I'm not going to talk to him. Or, oh, I might go to this job because they paid a whole lot of money and I hate where God has me now or I hate where he told me to go. No, the enemy has death for, the, for us who get out of God's will, like who, who disobey. It's not, it's, you talk to that man if you want to. You sleep with that man if you want to. You're going to mess around and get something that you can't get rid of. This, this is what the enemy has set up now. It's not, we're not playing little. He's not playing fair no more because you have ascended into different levels in the kingdom of God because you are a force to be reckoned with. He is trying to kill you. He's not trying to just make you all sad and heartbroken. No, he is trying to kill you. Okay? So you need to think of that little cute co-worker. Oh, you, you look like a death sentence. No, absolutely not. That's how you got to look because the enemy is not playing fair. So you need to not play fair with him. Uh, what's the other scriptures? Uh, Zechariah, let me see. Close. 
Zechariah 8 and 12 through 17. The seed will grow well. The vine will yield its fruit. The ground will produce its crops and the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people. Just as you, Judah and Israel, have been a curse among the nations, so I will save you and you will be a blessing. Do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Just as I had determined to bring disaster on you and show no pity when your ancestors angered me, says the Lord, so now I have determined to do good again to Jerusalem and Judah. Do not be afraid. These are the things you are to do. Speak the truth to each other and render true and sound judgment in your courts. Do not plot evil against each other and do not love to swear falsely. I hate all of this, declares the Lord. God is saying, be strong, be courageous. Do not be afraid of the temptation of the enemy. As long as your heart goes to God first, about everything that is not of him and you know when it's not of him because you have convictions you will be fine god is saying you cannot be scared out here you cannot be scared of the devil and what he be using you cannot it is not the time to be afraid of what he has called you to do it is a time to be a soldier step up to the to the line and fight you fight with your obedience, all right? So the next part of the word, just obey, nothing extra. Just obey, nothing extra. Literally, just do what God told you to do, all right? Here's my example. Yesterday, the Lord told me to fast. He told me to fast today, and I'm like, okay, I'm a fast. I'm used to fasting. Yes, sir, got it. And I even confirmed, I asked him, Lord, do you want me to fast for such, 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 such? And then he had me see the word yes in my email when I opened my phone up. And I'm like, okay, obviously you saying yes. And it was like quick. God is answering quick. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to fast. So then I'm like, are you, are you telling me to fast from food? I knew in my heart that he was telling me food, but I just act like I wanted to confirm something else. I don't know. And um, so he had said food and I'm like, what else? Social media, YouTube, blah, 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 blah. I'm like writing all these other things. And then I flipped my Bible open um, to Deuteronomy. I flipped my Bible over to Deuteronomy 12 and 32. And it said, what things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. God is like, God was like, I just told you to fast from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. from food. I didn't tell you nothing about no social media. I didn't tell you nothing about no YouTube. I just told you to fast from food. Stop trying to add and be doing extra stuff that I did not ask you to do. It is important that we obey the Lord specifically what he says do and do not try to add or take away because now you're in disobedience. He didn't ask you to do all that. He simply asked you to walk outside. He simply asked you to go to that store today. He simply said, watch this movie. He simply said, hey, don't log into Instagram today. He simply said, hey, don't eat from eight to eight. He didn't say, cause me, I like to like take it far. I like to be like, okay, I'm not eating till, till Friday at 12. Like, because I know I can fast for 32 hours. I can fast for like however long the Lord lets me fast. Like I can fast for 72 hours. I can do it. I'm an overachiever. God is like, ma'am, I told you to fast from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So I like even force myself to eat this morning before eight. But normally I would just fast, but I'm like, no, I need to be obedient. Let me do, because then I mess around and do all day fasting. And then God be like fast tomorrow and the next day too. And now I'm so empty because I didn't obey him. And I sit here and not eat the whole day. And I don't know what he has up his sleeve for tomorrow. So that's why I have to obey him today. When the And, and I, it's kind of hard for me because I'm used to every other day not eating. But the Lord, like I told you guys before, has like brought me out of that. And he's telling me, you know, eat one meal. Um, you know, don't eat till, till lunchtime or don't eat till dinner time, whatever, whatever. Like I literally every day like have to go off. Okay, are we eating today? Are we not eating today? What you want me to do? And I'm not really fond of 
a little bit of the extra pounds that, you know, my body is picking up. But I know that God is preparing my body for children. Like, and I know that fasting every other day was for a season and I have to get my vitamins and nutrients and all of that stuff up so that I could bear the children that he's called to my womb in Jesus name. So I know why he's doing it, but I want, I want to feel more snatched and more, you know, like I felt when I was fasting every other day, but God has had to like teach me how to obey him and how to trust him. He's like, Dana, I'm not going to cause you to lose all of that weight and then bring all that weight back on you. But I need you to listen to me because I need your body to be in a certain state for you to healthily carry what I have told you is coming to you. You know what I'm saying? For, for you to healthily fulfill the roles that I've called you to. I need you to obey me. And I'm like, Lord, okay, help me. Okay, help me. So it's a daily thing with me and him. It's a daily thing. God is saying, just obey what he said. Do not add anything to it. Do not take anything from it. Okay? So um, I think that's the end of the word. Yes, I think that is the end of the word. So let's re redo it. Heads up. Satan doesn't play fair. Just obey. Nothing extra. Hashtag watch. Um, I know the Lord is going to, you know, have me have some, I have some words that are coming um, here in the near future. So it, it won't be a long time before I'll be back because he's already kind of like downloaded something to me today that I might have to record tomorrow. I'm not sure. But anyway, see you guys the next time God sends me back. I love you guys. Bye.